waste waiting for others. Was a George Gore Mvelinga Sonin in a name Ra Masid Nkulunkulu, it's a sim tandar said Bong and Kulunkulu Nako sends a lamb sevens or swenza sends um sevens work, seven is the internet to fund the same Ganezako. Who said it is an internet who rutabana bahao kika ho rula mona um rubual bona mesal mats at siena mat mesal mats at si mishana malang i'm very excited guys thank you very much all over the world we're coming at you from johannesburg in south africa the name is dj subu and i'm humbled to be bringing you another exciting one let me plug my young man Go search for him on social media platform. He used to sell more fire with me in the streets of Johannesburg. He's since moved up to start his own coffee brand. He's one of the fastest growing coffee brands around Johannesburg city center. His name is Lebuhang. Lebuhang, Lebuhang. His brand is called Lebs Cafe. He's also got a coffee bean brand called E-Coffee. Go Google Le Lebuhang. What is Lebuhang's surname? Yeah, Lebuhang Nyandeni, that is his name. Search for him on social media. If you're around Johannesburg, give them a call online. Uh, DM him, order your coffees from him. It's black owned. He's a young man from selling Mofai in the streets to be inspired to start his own brand. I had to give him a plug. So I'll be having some caffeine and washing it down with the water. Once again, we've got our scholar. I wouldn't like to give him a long introduction because the last time we spoke we were to give me i know i mean i don't necessarily need long um introductions i'm just here to share knowledge so rest in peace knowledge so zamalek giza is here towards i'm cool towards i'm doing how are you doing sir? i'm humbled i'm fine sir you know uh, I've been around keeping myself and informing myself with a lot of things. And knowledge keeps one busy. Yes, because uh, knowledge is practice. When one is busy practicing, they accumulate more knowledge. And they accumulate more understanding about the whole entire movement. Yes. Abanda over the, since 2023 has started, Bebeng Teti Sagutin Ekfishepi. Uh, actually, a lot of them since I last saw you last year, Bebefuna with Ngale Unyaga Ngawe this year. Bebefuna go to be first episode. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure La Papa Kona, Bajablili, they're excited. I'm looking forward to learning from you again today. I'm humbled, Ngiabo. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to learn from you even still because it's an exchange. They say an iron sharp in an iron which means to come up with a steel <coughs> of an iron or a sword in the old eras, they have to use iron to sharpen iron. People who work as a smith, they know such a language that you'll need another steel to politely uh, reduce the heat of the iron. So a lot of time an iron will sharpen another iron. So to sharpen other iron, it means to enlighten another iron. So as long as people having a dialogue, they are enlightening each other, they are like sharpening each other, there will be a spark that will come out from there. And that spark is enlightenment. And I'm humbled as well. Um, this one is also not a debate. I'm not going to be coming in a lot. I'll be doing a lot of listening. But I'm interested in our journey unfolding into um, continuous lectures or information sharing with our young audience out there who is eager to learn more from you. They are always on my case about you. 
and also I'm looking forward at a later stage to also maybe start inviting other people and having debates. But um, for now, uh, I'm just thinking to an anya setem bisa ifun gus gelezela from gumkulu ifun kufunda nzola lela more than nzokulu. No problem, sir. I will talk. You know, let me tell you something. We are from um, a celebration that has already happened. It's called Islilo Skanom Kubulwan. And in the Europe, um, American, Northern Hemisphere in America, they celebrate a celebration called Iqwa. And Iqwa is a celebration of the spring. And in that spring, they celebrate a god called Kante Tehetle also known as Skekete. We have Skekete in our legends. Skekete, it is said he's the one who wanted to be killed by his own brothers. And when they wanted to crucify him, he ran away. Because he survived the crucifixion a lot of times. They tried to stone him to death, he come back to from the dead. They tried to, he's like Jesus Christ, but he come back a lot of time. And there's a legend that you can get still in Ethiopia about St. Georgis. Who they tried to crucify, but he came back a lot of time. He's known as Saint George in Europe. So his celebration is celebrated recently in in the first of May. That's a commercial celebration that is known worldwide, internationally. That is Saint George, the Dragon Slayer. That is why you see most of the people with a dragon, and there's this character who's carrying a long spear, neither a sword or any form of a weapon slaying a dragon so this celebration is celebrated even in south a in america it's called a uh, equa and it's it's a celebration of tetakamen because he have already conquered the darkness that is called the winter during the northern hemisphere so now it is it's already spring so they are celebrating the spring the appearance and they have what we call um the great maize cop lord the maize cop lord will having the maize, they will have a lot of maize symbolizing the sun, which means the appearance of the sun. Now the sages of that every nature will be growing and there will, there will springing, things will be springing all around. So that's the celebration is known as Kente Kente, also known as Skegete in our lands. In the lands of Ethiopia known as Giagis, in the lands of the Europeans known as George. Yes, sir. I think I must let people know that um, maybe in the beginning, what you are, one of one of the students, Zaga, the late great Coco Credo Motor. Can you maybe um, share a little bit about your relationship and how you got to learn from that type of knowledge from him? Uh, I learned from Baba Credo Motor uh, mostly from my grandfather, because these are the peers. These are people who live around the same environment, talking the same narrative of the ancient gods. So these same rituals he learned, we are same from the same school, in fact, meaning I learned from the same Zulu mysteries that I wouldn't divulge much on. Yes. I think maybe let me also, before we get we get into the topic today that I wanted to I wanted us to touch on is um black people the relationship amongst black people all over the world and they are missing science but before we get into that i'd like maybe to hear your thoughts on the recently um uh, the what it just happened the, the king's coronation in the uk okay you see uh, may the king ring for his ringing in his throne and um, god bless the king as they will say when they crown a king, they were crowning the king who governs a lot of conquered spoils like us in Africa. And we need to understand that when they were crowning him, they were crowning, making a new regime. And then this new regime, we need to understand it differently. We need to give it a more of a, what you call inquiries that are necessary. Because our inquiries within a third world or what we call um, the third world party or the sovereignty under the commonwealth. So us as sovereignty under the commonwealth, we need to rise up against uh, oppression, uh, destructions, 
so that we try to explain to the king that the whole entire monarchy in its ringing it has in transformed such a lot of things rather than to disagree we need to found a common ground where even us our african royalty is given such appearance when we crown our own kings like last year we had the crowning in guazulu even this year we have a crowning in the queen of the rain and there's no such um praise or hysteria about our royalty and their um, task so we need to remind the king of uh, england may god bless him that he needs to remember our royalties he needs to give their our royalties a chance again to express themselves and their intelligence science and information but the coronation coronation was a beautiful one it was beautiful with the empress her majesty they were looking so beautiful and appeasing but a lot of people are complaining about the diamonds that are on his crown what are your thoughts on that south africans africans all over the world when are the diamonds getting returned yeah because um, my thoughts on that it's the same thought like them most people who are having such an inquiry as i've said that we need to put our inquiries and uh, my inquiry on the diamond is that we we had a lot of gold digging that were made by the regime of the <coughs> royal throne of england so it's uh, the royal throne need to repair uh, repair meaning repatriation repairing and restoring of most of the things that and artifacts that were taken here in africa they need to do it gently by respecting the royalties that we have here in a commonwealth world that is under their sovereignty what is it what is it that you think the king can do different from um may his soul rest in peace the queen uh, if she tried by all means to put the influence of that uh, africans are oppressed not only in south africa but the whole entire africans or black people in the whole world that they may be given a chance to express themselves they may be given them chance to have their own institutions to have their own facilities and to rewrite history for themselves so that they can have their own science laboratories and medicinal laboratories where they can express their indigenous native knowledge system without being oppressed or ostracized and what are your thoughts on the white supremacist system that um the queen may so rest in peace and equally so now the king um have been presiding over for decades and decades and generations um and that has obviously oppressed a lot of us as black people all over the world um it's an uncruel system that has been um put in place and they were residing on and that uncruel system is not a system that they need to be proud of they need to change it that's my advice to them to transform it it will be better for the whole mankind because we need to look into the future of the skies now let's get into the relationship amongst all of us african american brothers and sisters in the us the caribbean countries europe all over the continent just all of us melanated beings all over the world and our suppressed science mm. you know um i would like to go to the spanish inquisition that happens in the 15th century in the 14th century the spanish inquisition introduced a system where people who practice their own uh, natural or what we can call in theology animism the practice of animism it has been forbidden and those people who practice natural systems where they will use natural object they are seen as being possessed by demons or used by dark forces and they were banned into stake and this tradition has been continually for about 800 years 600 years for now so this tradition has been an embedded and institutionalized in our laws 
and in our systems and governing systems where black people well wild don't have a right to express themselves and they don't have a way to express themselves like in south africa we have the witchcraft act in the 1950s that uh, introduced um, a separation within the church that the church the christian church became the ultimate way to express divinity rather than you can express yourself in an african way in an African way, you were uh, deemed as the witch. So you rather wear the uniform of the Christians or any form of the uniform that suit the order of the day. But the order of the day, since in the Southern Hemisphere, it was Christian. It has no much of the Islam like the Northern Hemisphere in Africa. So they had to change. They had to transform their behaviors. And they have to interact with spirits that they don't know now try to hide their secrecy. That is why we get in some of the families, they have what we call the white wedding and the traditional wedding at the very same time. The white wedding will be representing the Western traditional wedding and the traditional wedding will be representing them in their own land here in South Africa, in whatever culture or tribe they are. So such system have introduced limitation of practice. That is why in most of our literature, we are told much about God and we have been given proper understanding of Jesus and God rather than a proper understanding of advancement of technology, science and geology. Like we don't have a, even an understanding of the geomancy or geodency, the calculation of planet Earth. When people talk about myth, they'll only tell you about uh, astro, astro theology, about only the stars that we relate to. And we can relate to planet Earth. There's geomythology. There's all kind of mythology that we need to relate with. But we are not given such a mythology at all. We're not given scientific advancement, electronics, like the tetrots or the tetronites, whom the Bible talks about, whom uh, Joseph, a uh, father of Jesus, was a tecton tectonite. We had uh, what we can call this nowadays a mason. Uh, someone who's a craftsman, a craftsmanship. That is why it's called a carpenter. So this person had skills and craft and he passed through to Jesus Christ, whom already had a calling, whom already had a, a, a what we call a divine inspiration or divine calling. The same calling we can get from a Sangoma who's been a craftsman, good with beading, good with everything, crafting sticks, stones, and trying to sculpture mysteries and storytelling. And these people are not given a chance to express themselves, to express such attributes. Such things will help even our community. So well, while black people are not given a platform, we don't have our own laboratory that are black owned with black mind and black narrative, black ideologies. And what, what are some of those things that you think the masses of South Africa should know, especially about uh, between e, e writing, e religion and science? Because I remember the previous episode, um, a lot of people loved it. And I remember U, U, U Penua asked you some questions about the origins of um, human beings, and, um, and just how you broke it down about Amazul, and that was interesting because then you could hear or somebody else could just say you were speaking about aliens. Yes, to someone who will say I'm speaking about aliens, it's because they have no understanding what I'm talking about. First, uh, I've explained that a Christian propaganda, or what we can say narrative, not is in a bad way, were colonized by Christians, were um, invaded by Christians. Uh, institutions that we are under, governmental institutions, are built under Christian narrative and ideologies. So obviously, most people are oppressed. They don't have a mind that is beyond Christian understanding. They only know the universe that it has a God that is manipulating everything. I normally explain this psychological phenomenon through explaining mythologies. That um, in Europe, they have a mythology that Zeus or um, Helopius, in this case, Helopius will be the one that administrates the sun. Or Apollo but he will be riding on on the Sun which means he has a monopoly over the Sun but in Africa we we are we 
perceive the sun as the autonomous, meaning independent entity. No one is manipulating it. No one is monopolizing it. So there's a different perspective of what is divine between these two content of uh, viewing the divinity, what they call the sun. So in cases like um, uh, Christianity and science, in this case, us, it has made us not to view uh, God as some scientific achievement or breakthrough that man hasn't understand yet, yet he's in the quest to understand it. That is why uh, Europe has advanced. In uh, the time they were living, the time of Praga or Jonas Kepler, they didn't consider the earth evolving around the planet um, around the sun. They consider the sun and the rest of other planets evolving around planet Earth, meaning Earth was the center of the universe. That is why we get the um, presumption of the Earth being flat. Because in such a uh, assumption, we can say the Earth is geocentric or the universe, I mean to say, it is geocentric. But in an ascension that is recently introduced by Jonas Kepler's, by their calculation, having a different calculation of the phenomenon of the stars, the movement of the stars, he started to say the system is helicentric. And helicentric has been an African perspective from a long time ago meaning Africans with long time advance. And the helicentric calculations that Jonas Kepler has already introduced are used now in astrology, in many space stations. They are using Jonas Kepler's studies to study the phenomenon of the movement of the stars. Even the recent knowledge that we have about the movement of the stars is through string theory of Jonas Kepler. But now, Africans are not given that chance to express themselves like that. They are sunshine. So they don't have a way to understand what is God. And they don't have a way to venture into experimenting this God and making this God to look exactly with their daily life and try by all means to abstract sciences and forms of life where God can be. Like exactly when we are asked, where does the origin of man come from? The Bible will tell us the origin of man is from Adam and Eve. And then in the Bible, they are telling us Adam and Eve, they were made from the sand or they were made from the ground and God breathed the bread of life from to them. So Adam and Eve, it's a pre-made mind of understanding that men only exist in this inhabitants. They are only planetarian. So when you, you come with the knowledge that no, people come from the sky. There's other people who have traveled and chartered the sky out there beyond the time that we are in, even in the old times, then they wouldn't comprehend that because they already they are narrated by the institution of the religion Christianity. That tells them that Adam and Eve were the first human beings. So they don't have a mind to or some thoughts or form of comprehending such things that talks about outside inhabitants where people they were created outside there by something else. From an African context, who is God and what is, or maybe what is God? Uh, I will say it the way Mkulu Baba Kredo Muta said it. He said, and it is a traditional story that is explained, that African uh, Melissa makes sure he will research about God. She's a woman, a first person, and it was not here in planet Earth. These are sagas that happened beyond uh, the times of us living here in planet Earth. So when they're in the search of God or the creator, when we can use a, a close con a weight to what is supreme. So when they were looking for the creator, they found the creator. That's a silly thing. And then when they found the creator, it was scary and amazing and too hard to comprehend as man. So they make sure to emanate the creator through the mother and the father and the child. That is why you see Egyptian artifacts. They consist of gods who have wives, who have children. Even in African sagas, we consist of gods who have wives, who have children. Meaning uh, our system doesn't have an understanding of God the way the Europeans are trying to box the creator. 
That is why we don't have a name for the creator. We use different names to express attributes, principles, orders, and systems that we see the creator express to us. One of them is the family. No, continue. Yes. So that is why you see uh, we have even traditional aspect. When we are going to have a, a, a marriage, we have a in Taulo, we have Umbonil Selo, we have Umveza Buso. I may be not using the accurate words that are used in the old because language changes. But these are the principles and practice that we have. Uh, some people will call it Tilobol or all these other names. But at the end of the day, these principles are a way of conduct way of ethics and moral behavior that in this case these people are about to join together into one union and that one union is a representative of what is divine so in that divinity it needs to be run in a procedural system that is sacred and a ritual and a rite that is known to our tradition as our science to communicate with what is divine as i've said that divinity is expressed as a family to us so these all these systematic laws or jurial laws that you get in our marriage process these laws are made by our um, old gods that is why we call it isintu because it consists of the knowledge from the sky and it came to be a way of life of the people who are living in earth and then the ones who are living in earth when they change isintu they end up calling it isigo meaning these institutional uh, institutions who are juristically uh, mandated by the people from the sky, now they've changed to be something that is normally known by Isimo Esiguso, meaning the situation that we are in, in this world. That is why it becomes Isigo Stondo, meaning Isigo that originate to the men or the congress of those people who started to, to change it. And then Isintumpilo, meaning it originate from the ones who brought life from, to us because they were from the skies. That is why it is explained by the ones who are called Amazulu or called Abantu or you call them Kiyuku in whatever name you want to identify us or Ngunis. But at the end of the day, we are the ones who are from the sky and came to earth and bring this tradition. In other names, you'll call us in the Sumerians, they will say the Gigi's. They're also known as the ten, the ten Privilean kings or, or the great uh, pre-Divilian kings or the pre-floods according to biblical mysteries. The pre-floods, there were 10 kings who had ages that are old, who lived for 43,000 years, who lived for 430,000 years, who lived for a long time of period. But these periods are not symbolized by only these kings, are time periods that exist because of the ringing of such persons a, a traditional aspect or jurational systems that we use and these people they ring for a period of maybe four to three thousand years we using their system like this system that we are using now uh, the system of the marriage that i've explained it is old it predates even these kings you can found it in the uh, records of the gods when you record the gods now you can find such tradition that is why it is called Isintu that is why it's the oldest but now it still explains the universal movement, the stars the social construct what you must do, even scientific breakthrough, hence why we knew about technology but it was forbidden when you talk about people from the skies Maybe just to simplify it, I know we had spoken about it before, but I want you to um, simplify it for a person like me who does not understand what you're talking about. When I talk about people from the sky, I'm talking about what a man of these nowadays is trying to achieve. To charter the sky, meaning to have a rocket. That is why Baba Kredo Mutai talks about the birds who save a planet Earth from destruction or from the, the uh, from the famine that has struck planet Earth billions of years ago, when planet Earth only had uh, inhabitants of animals rather than human beings like us who, who come from the sky. 
So when we came from the sky, it means we were so advanced, we were advanced civilization, and we came from the sky through our spaceship, and we lost everything when we came here through losing what we call forgetful memory. Some they will call it the ancient, um, the long-term process of amnesia that we are in. That is why people don't know much of themselves and they are in the quest of knowing themselves. And they try by all means to fix and tune up with who they are. Some they want to know their past resurrections and who they are, I mean to say their past reincarnations and who they were and how they used to live and which place they used to live and who they were supposed to be in, in this time and what wound they were supposed to fix in this day and age because some they have fears phobias they don't know where they can they are from uh, you cannot trace them from your span of life that you already exist in this planet earth but you can trace them when you look deep into yourself internally and then internally you can find that eons of the infinity that you are the spirit that has been existing forever that can give you details of who you are so these are the cases of that if people want to know who they are from the sky it it, it, it takes such a journey it takes you to uh, cultivate cleanse your diamond inside you because it's rough you need to cleanse it so that it can be pure and clean and crystal that we can uh, adore it and say oh it's a sparkling diamond it becomes that sparkling diamond because you have cleansed it. You have take time and your own passion and your own tolerance and understanding and acceptance of, in, of the situation you are in in order to cultivate the diamond within that it may spark with, without so that it may shine. So it takes that to understand. But to make it simple is to tell them that we are advanced civilization. We had a ways that to do a lot of things. Then hence why we can simply travel within time. That is why we say umkati. Because we can travel within time. We um my grand 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 grandfather who is known as uh, the great last immortal of the gods. He's the last immortal of the gods. He's the one who show uh, who exposed the time machine that is used I, I, that is in Kariba? It is used by the gods. But he, in in one of the saga, Baba Credo Motua explain about my grandfather that he 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 shall come back again, cause he's the last immortal god who's been living with us. He shall come back again, and when he come back again, he shall use the time machine that people are not aware of. Because he, he did encounter himself, the future himself, who told him about such events that shall come. And then he passed through into a traditional oral stories that are told in the Ngoma mysteries. Hence why we know about that time machine. And we know about other time machines that we cannot even identify. But there are a lot of time, of machine, time machines where our ancestors have traveled in the future to know what is about to happen in the future. So we were advanced a uh, uh, civilization. That's what I will tell a layman. That uh, the way your civilization is advancing, where in our highest peak, you are looking like primate people. In the time that we were in, it was the highest peak. The, that is why we could build the pyramids the way we could build them and in your mind it still complicate you but a lot of people all over the world would say the pyramids were built by aliens yes because they make us aliens it's just us those aliens is us the black people that is why we still have the hard conditions of working um, i mean to say we have these hard genes to work in hard conditions all these cities well while they were built by black people who work hard there who want the, uh, who are hired as cheap labor you know what makes um melanin special it's the heat the electromagnetic that we produce electromagnetic pulse it's a powerful uh, systematic weapon and dimensional movement like in quantum physics it gives you more different calculations and spectrums of that there's beyond what we can see so it's like a highest achievement hence why um, your melanin is used for a lot of things to pump people's life to pump um to 
to give people rejuvenation blood um, like rejuvenation pills that are sold by elites out there such things are not told out there but i i will send you a video where one of the greatest uh, elite the rich man confesses such thing where he wanted <coughs> to purchase aborted fetus um, and then melanated aborted fetus for the sake of humankind as he says he says it's for the good of mankind but um, I wouldn't want to say a lot of details, yet they use these fetus and our melanin to sustain life, uh, to regenerate their cells and, and stuff, a lot of stuff that are, are not, um, some of them I'm not meant to say. So they are able to use melanin to um, stay younger? Yes. Sir. Even if they don't have melanin, so they f yeah. how do they find this melanin? Yeah, by... Um, a chemical waste. Chemical waste is these aborted fetus. Or from hospitals yes. all over the world, no? Yes, sir. Okay, I understand. You can purchase them. It's a legal thing. Um, mm. uh, uh, um, even in our government, they take these chemical waste and sell them to, like our hospitals, sell them to people who want to use them for other scientific use. So such scientific use... Um, it's only the people who have money, apparently, who can have access to them. But as me or as an ordinary black person, I mean, I don't even understand the power of my melanin. Yes, because um, you are in a forgetful state. You are blind towards your own power, how you are superior. That is why you are kept at bay to work nine to five and to be frustrated about achieving a beautiful car, having a beautiful house, and to make sure that you don't have any breakthrough. You just live your life as a waste working for others. But it's the way of life, and we call it like that. But it's not the way of life. One has to wake up somewhere. What is beautiful about waking up? Is that you no more smelling the coffee, you are drinking the coffee, literally. Normally they tell you that you must smell the coffee, but when you are awake, you can drink the coffee. You are no more smelling it. When you drink it, you are living. First, when you are awakened as a spiritual being, you are given a chance now to study who you are. As I've explained, your incarnations and everything. A lot of things that deals with you. So you, you are able to restore back your memory. You are able now to restore even your divine powers, attributes, pyrokinesis, uh, telekinesis, cleoverance, telepathy, all such attributes that you had from long time. And you are able to live the life the way you want. And apparently you can travel to other galaxies. So it's a privilege that you can travel. If someone it's a privilege to go to Hawaii and have a holiday there, then it's a privilege that you can travel to other places and have a holiday as a spiritual being while your body is zombie moving all around here talking whatever it want to talk or teaching people so i've i've looked at uh, a channel chan sorry go ahead like i'm saying it's pleasure to be spiritual trust me awaken it's beautiful man yes yeah tina kan is saqala kule mfunde but i journey entle kakhulu it's true man. i appreciate it yes my lord and majority of people they don't uh, we we lack uh, appreciation towards our self knowledge. As I've said, we were given such a thing, uh, a chance. I mean to say, by Corona, um, the Corona, the shutdown, it gave us a chance to look into ourselves. But now there's a lot of things that are moving. We have already given a, a time to move all around, to be busy, to be busy for with nothing, because we are busy with nothing. We are just doing nothing. At the end of the day, we go to the deaths, and we don't know what we are carrying when we are going to a death. And we assume some people are given a knowledge that, oh, you live once. There's no scientific proof that there's, there's dead people. But there's other meteor, what we call um, metometry and thermomancy. Thermomancy and metomancy they were created by scientists out there in Europe. 
and it's a study and calculation of measuring either the spirits around the environment of the room or around the place or a church so they were always investigating churches and forms of people where they are practicing uh, what we can call voodoo or our african spirituality so they discovered that there's spirits truly even in the church but where there's a majority of spirits is where they practice african spirituality that is why when someone is into african spirituality things tend to be real really not sense um in in a manner that uh, it is truly practical and um, it takes a doctor um, a dna doctor um, to take your hair to investigate your health uh, your habits and how you how you are behaving or your immune system to know about your immune system but it takes a a, a witch if we will want to call it like that to take your hair and manipulate you control you and use you for anything that is scientifically it's just we are looking at it as a witch but it's the same equivalent uh, accumulated data with uh, as science just the um, dna doctor ha- doesn't have proper advanced knowledge system that the um, so called witch has a lot of people say but why don't these witches fix all these problems that black people are in uh, how can someone fix their problem um, when they are, they have a nuclear weapon or um, weapons arsenals they have a lot of arsenals within their environment how can they fix themselves they will shoot each other that's the only thing they are hungry they are desperate so they will shoot each other but if you give them a chance to unite to do one thing in one form apparently will produce better civilization it is said by old leaders um when they were so happy for the new age during the eight, uh, the 19th century and the 18th century when they were happy for the new age knowledge they said um africa will be the one that will be the center of the advancement of the world and it will resolve all the problem of the world and now people are still questioning that that how can africa do that and apparently everybody knows when you know that there's someone who can go pass through your door or your wall then is in africa having any solution to every problem because there's someone who knows about a particular medicine that can heal you or boost you or stimulate your mind or give you access to other realms of the world then isn't these people the ones who have the knowledge of the future and solutions towards our problem if we put them in one accord and unite them and institutionalize their same systems as far as they've institutionalized religious systems we talk about atoms but we say they are religiously adonia a eh, atom they have a relation with adonia eh, atoms but we don't want to use african systems to make them relate in scientific aspect we say no it's primate but we use religious words to say we are talking about science nucleus is a god by the way protominus is a god all these things are gods and they are european gods they are not african gods at all so how can we consider such a thing and say we are intelligent we are not intelligent at all we have already chose to view european gods as superior gods we already chose to view european system as a superior system and it has already failed us during um, our regime we never had a global warming people say we talk about the old history of the black people as a utopian history where there was no violence there was no there was no king who was supposed to be violent in the system that is called ubuntu or abantu that system is a system of umwaati in a modern uh, european 
interpretation of our languages that we wrote. That is why uh, 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 people want to justify their wrongs by identifying the same kings who were already colonized. You want to tell me about someone who was colonized by Arabs that he was an African king? He was colonized by Arabs who told him that we can make a lot of money by having slaves. So he's not an African king. Because according to the Buntu Ma'ati law, you don't have to have a king, a slave. And there was no uh, war slaves. There's no such a thing like that. It's stories, narratives that are created. If we had war slaves, we would have created tribes like the uh, Yao tribe in Zanzibar who are now living in Zimbabwe, who are calling themselves the Yao. You can find them even in Madagascar. They are a created slave tribe because they were uh, 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 Arab slave traders there and who, whom they have encountered. Hence why they call themselves in that Arab slave trader called Yao Yasadin. Do you see these things? So we don't have such a thing here. We are not called by some Arab or some a European. We still have our own native original names that are indigenous that can relate scientifically um, with other concepts, galactical concepts, uh, astrological concepts, quantum physics per se. Hence why when I talk like this, people will say, no, these are delusions, these are illusions. Like now, I explain about Skegete. That Skegete had his brothers who were jealous of him. And I told you about uh, Kentehet. Kentehet is the same God, a maze God that is worshipped in, 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 in America. All the American tribes worship Kentehet. They, they do have a time of equal. And we know about Skegete. He got there through migration. He was chased by his own brothers. That is why we know about that story. And in, 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 in America, he's known as a god. They tell us about uh, Aser. We know about Umelase. We know him. We know about that man. That is why we call ourselves like that. But now they want to tell us he's a god. But as we know, he's a priest. He was a royal son and a prince. West part, not even a king. But them, they know him as a god. So there's a lot of things that people don't even see that we ourselves already know. It's already in our way of life. Whom among everywhere in the whole entire world is so concerned about their dead, how they are living? That's the Egyptian book of the dead. It tells you about the dead, how they will live in the other land of the dead and what they will encounter. It's us. We tell you those stories, the same stories of the book of the dead. We are the ones who explain them. We are the ones who explain about Inje Bomvu, Inja Yogufa, known as Anubis in the recent talks. We are the ones who break all these things into simple context, but they make us look weird and stupid because of the forgetful spell that we are under. We have already forgotten who we are. We have lost contact with our inner self. We took pride in external things, in pleasurable things. That is why people took pride in the ego of their ranks. That, oh, I'm professors who... You know me, do you know I'm a professor? They can only tell you that when they alter their ego. They will never tell you that I'm sort of a spirit that comes from somewhere. Because they are not altering the spirit as an ego. Ego is identity. It's not a bad thing. It's to identify yourself. But when you too muchly identify with the world thing, that is where it becomes bad. Because world things are going to end. So you are about to end here. And you are about to experience your spirit. And if you never gave it a chance to study it, to inform it, or to know it, to study its science, how are you going to know the rest of the things? Hence why we have systems and ways to communicate with the dead. Because we know we are going to meet that same fate. 
Where do people go when they die? These are, are things that people want to know, but I, I will tell you a simple thing, a silly thing that Africans knew. Africans knew that death in this world is not the only death. There's death even in the world, in the land of the dead. I've already explained about the land of the dead by talking about the governor of the land of the dead, known as Umuela Sewehlang. That is why they say you pass the reeds there and you see the land of Sogam, where Amabele, Avela Kona. That is why we eat Sogam. He's called Osiris. So in the land where people go to the dead, it's the same journey that we are living here. We just pass through to another realm and dimension. And in this dimension, we can access it through symbiology. That is why we'll put alcohol, we'll put beverages. These are the symbiol. Uh, alcohol is a recent thing. It's made by our colonists, yes. But it's a symbol. This symbol symbolizes the same alcohol as Mkomboti to make them tipsy and happy that they may come with a happiness. Hence why we use Invulam Lomo, Sinevulam Lomo where we put a, a alcohol first before we have a conversation in this negotiation about the marriage issue. This vulam lomo is to calm our mind. And a, a person, when they are already drunk, they are calm. That is why I told you the story of Nom Kubuluan, that a woman those days, they were crying that, no, you, you are making our men to have imikuba yeiluan. Because the man was overdoing the beverage, the alcohol beverage. So this alcohol beverage is symbiology to this Nomkubulan because even again, Nomkubulan has done the same thing to Skaka. Skaka is the tortoise that carries uh, the whole entire world. That is why the world, uh, uh, it, it, it's moving like it's shaking in its axis. And then that shaking in this axis that's where we get our day and night. And through that, it's because Skaka has been made drunk by Unom Kubuluan, who have broom Un Kombot for Uskaka, the tortoise. Because tortoise complain that uh, the great creator has been destroying earth for a seed time. So Skaka was so tired that no, no, no. And Mvelinganga had to pull Skaka with a tail. That is why Skatai, he swings. Hence why we get our evolution around the sun as a yearly, the 365 days. And Skatai, since he's drunk, he's too slow. Because he's drunk. Nomkubulwane gave him beer so that he may continue with the duty of moving earth. So Sitata, what he does, he moves slowly. So that is why we have 25,000 years, 920 years as an evolution around the constellations that are close to us that are called 12 constellations that we can view. It's called the universal year. So it's because of Sitata taking it slowly and tired. These are the sagas of us explaining the mysteries about the movement of the universe. So Nom Kubulane again has done it there by making Skaka drunk. Do you see a problem? If someone blames me with that, why Nom Kubulane does appear in such incidents where he, he, he brews alcohol and he gets Skaka drunk? The tortoise, the poor tortoise. Who is drunk now? and continually pulling our earth. Being pulled and forced by the great Mvelingang. So do you see uh, when we talk about the importance of alcohol, it's not based on that it is brewed by white people. The white people, they started to know about alcohol in Europe. They started to know recently. That is why Germany, uh, when they are say, I forgot the name of the Selenian Indian. 
Yes. When he started to make the beer festivals, it's because of the celebration of the great Umbambala, known as Nomkubulwane in our language. You can find her in, in Sumeria. Herself to inherit the throne of Sumeria. She had to get all the royalties drunk. So the saga cannot repeat itself. You can even find it in Egypt. Segment pasted, known as Nomkubuluan. Unomkubawe Luan. Why Sekman Pates became Unomkubawe Luan? He became Unomkubawe Luan because he started to massacre everybody. After he has drunk at them with the, the alcohol. Is she, that's not bad. These are our stories, how we told them. To understand and abstract moral discipline and sciences and knowledge that trace beyond. Because through those behaviors, we can detect and decode the necessary knowledge that was told or the necessary information that was meant to be known. Meaning, example, me explaining the axis of the earth, uh, the three layers of the axis of the earth, that it has its own axis and it moves around the rotation of the axis of the sun, you know, and it has the movement that is influenced by the stars, same the stars that they call the Syrian stars. So we are influenced by the circulation of the Syria star, and this Syria star with its influence, that's where we get the 25,920 years. Through that influence that has been happening, that we will have all the position of this constellation rising accurately with our sun. So these are explaining stories. That is why people will say these stories are no silly stories. Because you are not initiated to this secret. Let's remember Africans initiated, they became a secret because they were oppressed. Invasion has already come. The strange ones have already landed in our lands. In the, in the time of the great Kadesi, as is said by Baba Kredo Mutwa in Indaba, my children. Kadesi invaded our lands. And Peggy, uh, all of them, uh, other leaders, sold their self to Kadesi. But now, uh, the name Kadesi, it's a misowner of the war that happened in Egypt. So our forefathers knew that uh, a person who knows the story will tell it directly. That Kadesi, America, is the second war. Kadesi is a revolution that happened during the times of Ramasesi II. It's known as the War of Kadesh. People who study Kemet Egyptology mysteries. So in that time, the history as is given differently in sagas and myths that this Kadesi was a, 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 the strange ones who take over our lands and they did wrong things. They, they created slaves. And then when you get Ramasesi after he defeated the Kushat Empire, known like that in mainstream knowledge, in our saga is known as Inklegezi Zagampel, or known as the Sigi dynasty. The Sigi dynasty, when it was destroyed by uh, 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 Ramasesi, Ramasesi makes sure to, in, uh, to, to, to craft it and to write it into the walls. If, even today when you go to Egypt as a tourist, they show you those walls of the war of Kadesh, of the Nubians. They say Nubians and Sudanese and the Kush being arrested. Because of that rebellion. It's a rebellion that rise and make the, uh, 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 the Hyksos in e Egypt to fall. But they did desterilize it during the time of Ramesses II. And Ramesses II is the one that they claim that he, 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 he dig the pyramid Giza while it was covered by the sands. These are the stories that are not told publicly. 
But I wonder why people, they talk about much of Egypt if they're not ready to listen to these stories. That we have them, they relate to us. Egypt, uh, why they say he did it or, uh, 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 under the, the, the sense of the desert? It's because it was a secret where Ngoma, Isangoma, get initiated. Inyang, get initiated. So these Hyksos had no clue of that. Hence why uh, uh, Aka Ataman banned all the temples. Ramasesi did the same thing. Uh, 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 Tut Moses did the same thing. Their grandfather did the same thing. That is Tut Moses. And Amen the first. Amen Hotep the first did the same thing. That is their grand grand grandfather, who was a Hyksos. These are same people Baba Kredo Muta will tell us in in Daba, my children, and I allude them as a uh, uh, Gadesi Marika and Gadesi or the Empire of the Strange Ones. But in Egypt, you are told as they are Hyksos. It's the same story. But now it is told by a European who doesn't understand what is written there and by an Arab who has already dig. The first person who dig the pyramids and looking for treasure was Al-Azumurut who make every, all the, he was the first caliphate who, 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 who conquered Egypt apparently under the Mumuluk uh, 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 tribe. <clears throat> when he, uh, as an Arab, conquered uh, Egypt, they transformed Egypt. They started to dig in the graveyards, looking for treasures. That is why they discover these books, these written scrolls, who are called uh, Maruz Alurt, meaning the Book of the Dead, or the Book of the Dead Men, in proper, accurate ways. They mean the book of the dead men. And this book of the, that is why it's called like that these days, that the book of the dead. And then this book of the dead men was surprising for them that they couldn't uh, decipher it nor read it. So they were concerned about the treasures. That him, the caliphate, was forced now to uh, pay all the people who were cut the diggy as thieves. So it became a tradition. The European, they learn it from them. That's why they keep that record. So these stories are not told accurately. Are stories that are misinterpreted. Similar to the calendar. I explained that we have about a lot of calendar. We have a Venus calendar. We, the same uh, uh, Ketete or Skegete, or Kentetle, or Georgis, or Georgis, or George. It's a, it's a calendar system of Venus. That Venus now appears as, a, as, as, as a, a, a northern star towards the a, 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 a northern people in a northern hemisphere. But to us, in the spring, should appear as a northern, a, 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 a northern eastern star, I mean to say. Now she appears a northern eastern star to the northern people. To us it will happen again in the spring because the spring is in the northern people. So uh, Kentetel was celebrated on that. It was based on only that. That is the Venus calendar. That is why Venus is normally depicted as an April nor a, 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 a maze in other places. And then some other places they dispute Venus as a potato. And Kentekle, when he had to go to his father called Chiapokli, uh, the Lord of the Dead, when he had to go there in the, in the land of the dead, he had to carry the potato, the, uh, 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 the apple, and the maize, and he has to head Umkomboti. Again, Umkomboti enter itself in the tradition of the Americans. And it has much to deal with the dead. Same as us. When uh, Nomkubulwan had, uh, she, she had a sister, 
By the way, Nomkubulwane changes the name. She's not called Nomkubulwane. She was called Unomkubulwane, meaning the flower that spring or the lotus. That is why we have the lotus celebration during the spring. <clears throat> Of celebrating the springing of Nomkubulwane through the saga that I'm going to explain now. When Nomkubulwane, her sister, has already uh, uh, taken her to the underworld, her jealous sister known as Nooi. So when she's in the underworld, Nooi make Nomkubulwane to, uh, to sleep with Umgurumuru. Mungurumuru is one of the uh, 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 candidates. And the chieftains in the general military of the underworld. So when he slept with that god, it was under a force. Hence why we get the sour time called winter and autumn. But when Nomkubulano was rescued by the great winds, and those winds were the winds that brought the dust, she came out from there in the underworld. With her seven attributes of power that she was wearing. And she became Unum Tubuluane. The one that uh, spring, that is why it's called the spring festival. And we celebrate it called Sept Opot or Septet in Egypt. As we call it, what do you call it? Um, September. No, uh, in Zulu, Ugvugela. Oh, uh, 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 this is Zulu. Uh, no, no, we have a word for that, an accurate word. I'm thinking a lot of uh, foreign word from Africa, but we have a word for that. Upsiga be 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 intuasanto. Yeah, upsiga. Yeah, intuasanto. Meaning, uh, it's about to approach summer. That is why summer is called Ucho. Meaning, say, show me, they, they already uh, uh, produced. That is why I was looking for this word. Hence, it's called Intuasa Club. Because it's still, Spring. yeah, it's still initiating the, 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 the producement. It's still initiating to, to be produced, to appear, to image. So that is why Nom uh, Kubulwane emerged now as that lotus plant and that lotus plant we celebrate it december meaning it's where the sun is up in the up hitch and we celebrate it december call it's called iziba it's called like that the lotus plant and it's its other name is called umbani normally it does appear in in cape town Deben. Uh, scientists who study Bonatical, they know about that. It's predominantly here in South Africa. Such a celebration that was celebrated in uh, Egypt. It's known as the Blue Lily. So she appears as that Blue Lily. Meaning she becomes now the, uh, the spring, the, the new beginning from the traumas and frustration of being raped by Gorumungo. So that is why they call her Unum Tubuluane, meaning the flower that springs or blossom. And then that changes to Unum Kubuluane because people became Nemi Kubaye Luane. It's even Baba Credo Muta does explain this. And you can get it uh, being explained in traditional teachings, as a oral teachings, that you, you should know the differences. As uh, Amarava, when, uh, when Amarava she's about to die, she get Matakaraka. And Matakaraka became the noisy evil witch that comes out from out of, out of her uh, 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 womb spring from the chest. This explains the two separation of a human being, the good and the evil. That is why she's called Unom Kubuluane and then she's called Unom Kubuluane. It explains the nature that we have in ourselves, that we, we have um, the negative side and the positive side. And it, it goes to the old teachings that we get from the Western brothers who are called the Mason, the Chekapot. 
It have the black and the white. So man is living in the poor dwells, enjoying the light and the shadow as one beautiful experience. Baba Kredo Muta does allude that into Indaba, my children, where he explain about two worms that men contain. The worm of the lighter side and the worm of the darker side. So one has to restore balance. When you are too good, you die. When you are too evil, you die. But you have to always restore balance. That is why we have a say that says the good die young. Yes, my lady. When a lot of the historical knowledge that is spoken about mostly today all over the world, um, sorry, when a lot of the knowledge, or a lot of the, when a lot of things were happening in the northern part of Africa, in Egypt, etc., what was going on down here in the southern part? Okay, that is continent? where we get the name Ningizim. It it consists of Amazim. Zimu meaning when you go to the Shona people, even in Swahili, going to uh, ne, uh, Fulani, they will tell you Zimu means the ancestor. And then Zimu means a god. Um, these are gods in other places. That is why when you go to the Lozis, uh, when they talk about Nyame Nyame, Nyame Zimu, or Manzim uh, Nyama, or mazimunyama, you know, they are talking, not manzamnyama, mazimunyama. They are talking about the nyamenyame, the great old God. So zimu means God. So in this place, it means the great ancestor in some other form. In this place of the land, it consists of these ancient gods. These ones who are from the sky. When uh, in the Bible they say the Ark of the Covenant led it in the lands of the Ararafat. And then when they quote in the legends of the Sumerian that the great Ark of uh, Enlili, Enuku, Nuntu, Nununu, and all these gods, it landed in the lands of Ararafat and in the mountains of Ararafat because they are the highest mountains. They are lying to you. The place that the great lords and the gods landed is the is the mountain called in Tabazo Kathamba. They are just here. Drunken mountains. Mountain. Yes. That is why we say ni nabasigele in tasa in tabenizo kathamba. Meaning the great spaceship. So these people, uh, 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 old, old, old legends does explain about our origin here in South Africa, how most people used to live here, the Zimu. Meaning most people were scared of the Zimus. They apparently have stories that the Zimus used to eat human beings. Or oh, is where the name Zimzim Zim Zim come, come from. from? Yes, that is why kings they call themselves like that, Zimzim, Zim. out of interbreeding with the Mazimu, because the Zimu were they from the sky? They are the ones who carry the full hundred percent pure blood DNA of the gods, and that god, the last immortal, is known as Ulumikanda, the last of them of the Zimzim. Zim. So this place was consist of the Zimzim. There were a lot of them. No one could trade on this place. It was again full of mist. That's why these people who live here, they were known as Abantubintuli, Bagantuli. Because of that mist that you get. You, you, we used to still get it in the 1980s and 70s and 60s. It started to deteriorate in the 19, uh, year 2001, year 2005. That's where it has scarcity to appear, that mist, meaning the clouds descending here, down. Apparently, it is, say, Olympia that Zeus used to live is South Africa, or it is Africa, if we want to put it into a continental content. 
But if you want to put it into a place where Zeus, all the gods, used to visit in Africa, they tell you it's the southern land, the land of the gods. Even it's said in the Ilats of Homi, in the Greek Ilats. So you can get these stories about this land being the land of the gods and the land of the reeds. That's why we see Nemishana. And then in this land of the gods and the land of the reeds, the gods live according to their own ways. Where they lived, they left a lot of monuments. We have monuments here in Zailoelanga, a lot of different stuff, even in Dragon Square and Mount Cane. There's a lot of monuments and artifacts that are not given to the public. Apparently to study the carbon radiation of Earth, of planet Earth, that it, do, it is 4.5 billion years existence. It's through drunken span mountains. Our mountains. So it is obviously that it, it, it has a lot old trace of things. And then they found these things, some they are kept in these universities as archives, what they found in our lands. So that they can narrate why these things are here. Because we were not civilized, by the way. And the land only belonged to the Batwa, as far as the narrative goes. But the Batwa themselves are the ones who knew how they interpreted with the strange ones who came under the regime of Gadesi when we quote it in our historical database. And we were living here. And they migrated away from such crisis when we helped them to fight against such crisis. They were agreeing with that crisis. They were agreeing with that regime. These are old stories, stories of 4,000 years ago. Who can talk them now? A, 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 and, and a colonist who came recently. He cannot tell us the stories. We are the ones who still hold those old stories. And that is why we live in coexistence with the Twa people. The queer people, the Nam people, we live in coexistence with them. We marry amongst each other because of that treaty and unity that happened during the time of defeating the great uh, lords, Ramaseses and all of them. So there's a misdirection of the story. We are not told the proper story. That here in South Africa, there were people who were living and they were bound to, apparently, because the coincidence are bound to. There's another uh, thing I told um, one of the priests I know. He has been in the podcast public platform even him. I told him that, it, you know, the 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 batwa you can found their active uh, uh, graphic in planet mars and then people didn't know but in the old time planet mars was called Tliago or Tlimago. that's where we get the name Tamago. the red god Since these things are not told and no one wants to tell them, um, they make sure we don't know about them. Coco Credo Muto speaks about reptiles. And David Icke interviews him, interviews him for hours and hours and the narrative of David Icke all over the world has just been everywhere and a lot of that information has always been deemed as conspiracy theorists. What was Coco Credo Muto talking or alluding to? Because he even has some sculptures um, of what you and I would um, call aliens. But um, And I would like to encourage a lot of you guys who are watching this episode now to go search, even on YouTube. Just search on YouTube uh, episodes of um, David Icke with the great Coco Credo Muto. And just listen to their conversations. And he also talks about another story of where he himself was abducted by aliens in Zimbabwe. And he shares a story of how they experimented on him. And he's never been the same after that experience. 
and it's a painful story when he delves in it because it's uh, it actually sounds very unbelievable and it's scary mm. but it's um interesting information that I'd like to uh, probe you on okay there's a a a a, a, a character called Ngungi. Ngungi wouldn't want me to talk these stories because he's the one who closed the doors so that the nunzu when it come it just execute and keep the guidance and the laws of the gods but uh, i will i will tell the story the reptile that people are obsessed about they are from the draconian constellation we have already said that but now what they need to know they need to know the stories the old stories you get in egypt about creation they tell you a glimpse but let's give you the details when gab and nut are already born so gab he must come and inherit earth that is why in the bible they say earth uh, doesn't have a beginning even you get that even in the books of the dead you get that even everywhere it doesn't have beginning but now when Gap has to inherit earth. That is why earth is known as Gap. When he has to inherit earth, he had to fight what we call the serpents. The serpent or the reptilian in this case. They were the ones who, who dominated and inherited the earth as their own. And they did their stuff. So he had to conquer them and overwhelm them and lie over them. That is why he's sleeping on top of the serpent. In real graffitis of Gab and Nut. <clears throat> so Gab symbolizes in this case an insurgency of people who came who found these reptilians who are living here and defeated them. These are stories that are old now. Billions of billions of years. So these serpents, when they were defeated, they live underground. So most people assume that um, reptilians are just from the sky. They are just underground. They are under the basement. Say. That is why the underground world was known as the underworld. And when you go to Greek mythology, they show you these different figures with different images. Even separate like images, even into Egyptian, even into Sumerian, the Aztec, the Omelets, they talk the same thing. That when you go underground, you'll find um, mis uh, misshaped people or humans who don't appear exactly as humans, but they can breathe and walk and talk like us. Some of, of them, they, some of them, they are human erectors, but they have different images. So they are living underground. That is why there is an underbase movement or underbase world. Like in the underground of the sea. When you say they live amongst us and they, they can be like us, is that where the concept of teleporting comes from? What uh, people would call teleporting? The transformers, the transformers or ship shapers. Shape shifters. Yeah, yeah shape shapers. Mm. I mean to say ship shaping. Uh, shape shipping a uh, uh, medicinal and system has been scarce amongst these um, entities if we will identify them like that so since it it has been scarce they they cannot come and interfere only the few who can interfere elites kind of like so they come and interfere within our life as baba credo muto said that um, to think that we are the only human that were breeded by God, or we are the only entities that is living and intelligent that they were breeded by God, that is ludicrous and comedian and part of a circus. Because there's other entities that live out there. And some of them, they are watching us. They are overseeing us. They are always um, a monitoring us. And then there's where he alludes again. You get these legends told orally. 
But I would like to quote him so that we know about the great master. Not quote only that it's orally. The great master says again that um, there's not only one entities or one form of a race that came here that is alienic. There's different races. That is why some are like us, humans. And we are part of them. They are our relatives. They are us. But some, they are our relatives in the gene, but they're not like us. Because a human being, as I've explained the story last, that we are from the sky. So pre us going to the land of the normal, or the constellation of the normal, we are from the spider galaxy. And pre us living in the spider galaxy, we're living in other galaxies I wouldn't name about because man hasn't known about them. So when we are from those galaxies, it's because of wars, it's because of clashes. And then we found ourselves in Cyrus' uh, galaxy. And then when we found ourselves in the Cyrus galaxy, we were told about planet Earth from a long time. That this uh, is a place that we can find safety and peace because it's quiet and far away and protected by the great Ngongi. So we, we had journeys to come here, fire traveling journeys and stories to tell about that. That is why we found ourselves here. We had to interbreed with different species. We, we, as far as you know us, our nature, we are too, we are too expressive into sensuality. We express ourselves sexually, Africans. So we, we slept with a lot of different races. And we have inherited different genes. In this case and age, you, you have different strings and genes that trace the galaxy itself. The track of the galaxies, races, and, and uh, different species that appears there. So we had that. We had encounters with different species. That is why we found ourselves here. And then when we found ourselves here, we are different than our brothers who came from the spider galaxy. Because we have already interbreded with different races. When we go back to the... You said it's Drake, Dracos. Uh, a Draco, yeah. Draco. You said they live underground. Yeah, Draco, the people, the Draconian, the they Draconian. are living here in planet Earth underground because they were defeated. Yeah. Um, there's also rumors, and obviously it's deemed as conspiracy theory, that they feed on human humans, energy. Human energy. Yes. Um, let's remember, um, you, you, you do feed on human energy as a human being. That is why we get people who, who benefit in drama and trauma, and frustration, and who exploit people's poverty. Because even a human being can benefit from that. Like you can eat energy. You can be excited by seeing someone suffering. And some others, they don't get excited. Because they benefit when someone gets to go up or rise. So it differs on this energy throwing or vampire, if we can call it like that, energy vampire. So the reptilian true, they are energy vampire because they succeed in other people's drama and frustration. Hence why they plot always destruction so that we don't evolve, we don't ascend. The form of that we are always stopped and there's someone who intercept into our growth. It's because they benefit in these dark forces that we always produce. Since we don't have a benefit, they have a benefit. But we ourselves can eat energy. It's normally known. It's simple. There's people who benefit in going to watch sport. They enjoy that energy. That kinetic energy of force of movement. Seeing people moving all around. Or watching wrestling. Like I enjoy wrestling, by the way. I love WWE. Mr. McMahon, he makes it nice, you know. It entertains. But that kind of energy, it's drawing. If someone likes something and then they are in tune to it, watching it, you have already given it your focus. 
and your focus is like taking all your energy into it and you are already absorbing whatever it gives you that is why some other people uh, when they've um, like example Tupac when we have listened to Tupac some came out as thugs because he was talking about the rough situation that is happening in America but say some came out as poet some came out as rapper some came out as lawyers some came out as teachers some came out as uh, spiritual leaders because they were listening to a person that talks in coded language but he talks about his literal life but he talks in coded language so we'll have a different way of viewing and opinions that we absorb from this person meaning our perspective will never be the same way we approach him but the rest who are taking him literally will be criminals or thugs exactly yes i think i hope you guys enjoyed this one <laughs> i enjoyed it i think it's one of those you're gonna have to rewatch it again three times or five times and I think it'll throw you to some books of the late great Coco Credo Moto. May your soul rest in peace. Lalong Oklom Dom Dala. Siabong. Siabong and Fundiso. And before um, you leave us, I would like for you to refer our audience to some books. Those who think they might be interested to delve into this type of knowledge or to start or to even know further about some of the things we're talking about today. What books can you recommend to them? Okay, I will recommend Ngungu Atiango, Decolonization of the Mind and an African Literature. It's a nice book. It's decolonizing your mind. It helps you to understand a literature in its form and how we have different literatures that influence us and how we are not thinking our, according to our own way of making opinions as Africans or studying our social environment or social deeds and sciences so that we can produce uh, philosophies and ideologies and then i will recommend another book um friend fenon range of the earth you know why i recommend these these are books that will transform your mind that will give you a chance to absorb a uh, different information and not take it as a bad thing because they are telling you how your mind has been programmed and they're giving you a chance. Like French uh, French Fenom, he's a psychologist, same as in Gungu Ationgo. He has studied social psychology. So these people will help you on understanding other things. And I'll recommend people to read about great civilization, pre the great civilization of Egypt, written by Dr. Evan Sematini, or Ivan Sem Setima. Uh, he's one of the great uh, linguistic Astro anthropologist, anthropologist, and uh, psychologist, and social psychologist. So these are people who analyze our situation and try by all means to bring us into close contact with our um, uh, African history. He's talking about pre-colonial um, America. People need to get that book. It's Dr. Avin Van Setima. And then uh, Ngungi Watiango, Decolonization, and Friend Friend on Range of the Earth. This will be a nice book combined when you study them, because the other one will tell you about the American influence of uh, the African influence in America and in literature's form and give you some of the f uh, professors you can research about who have made such research in the white world and uh, none outside the totalian academic system and then you um, the other one who will teach you about how africa was influenced by colonization you know how uh, your your mind has been blinded not to understand things clearly and the myth of africa because uh, he explained mythology of Africa, how it, it had oral folklores and symbiological teachings and decoded uh, and ciphers to be deciphered. Uh, that is Ngungi Watiango. And then French Frenon will help everybody to have political will because uh, we are stripped of our political will. That is why we don't have ed economical privilege. In the meantime, someone try by all means to have what we call collective co economical privilege. We destroy each other because we don't understand what we call unison, unison of political will, or also known as united political ideology, meaning not partisan, but ideology. 
where we have communal relation for our own race, like the rest of other races. Hence why Michael Gabi said, when people stop putting your back against the wall, start to not, and let, don't let the white man love you that you're not the white. Good. Thank you.